Hello, welcome back to SPL Book Talks. Um, today we wanted to talk about audiobooks. And I'm first going to highlight a few of our new audiobooks that we actually have in the library. And then uh, Miranda is going to talk a little bit about um, the e audiobooks that you can get through Libby. So um, I will start. We, we actually have a wide variety of audiobooks in our library, all different um, genres. And I would say that. Um, probably mysteries and romance are the most popular in audiobooks that we have. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, a few of our new nonfiction audiobooks that you maybe wouldn't think of trying, but I would definitely recommend. So the first is called, I know the title is a little daunting. The first is called Crucible of Hell, The Heroism and Tragedy of Okinawa in 1945 by Saul David. Um, I know that anything related to World War II has been very popular in our library, especially recently. Uh, this is actually the true story of the Battle of Okinawa in Japan during World War II. And the battle was actually um, a major factor in President Truman deciding to use the atomic bomb on Japan. So um, the author Saul David is um, a well-known historian and he did a lot of research um, he went to various archives in the US and Japan and the UK. And he also used a lot of firsthand accounts from soldiers um, who were in the Battle of Okinawa. Um, I'm a big history lover, so I'm always interested in anything that involves sort of oral histories. And this one um, sounds like it's a really thorough account of this battle and it has really good reviews. So. That's the first recommendation I have. That sounds really good. There's There are so many good World War II stories out there and yes. there's always room for more. Mm -hmm. um, I love that the author traveled to so many different locations just to gather all of his, you know, historical information to make sure it was accurate. That's so cool. That sounds really good. Yeah. Um, I think it, I think it could be interesting, especially if you're into history. So um, the other one that I wanted to talk about today that is actually one I just finished. Um, this has actually been on the bestseller list for several weeks. And this is uh, Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. Um, it's actually a memoir. Uh, like I said, I just finished it. I loved it. I wasn't sure if I was, I wasn't sure about it at first, if I was going to like it just based on um, what people were describing it as, but it was really good. So the author is a therapist, Lori Gottlieb. She actually is also, um, she used to be a writer before she became a therapist. And basically she ended up going through this very sudden breakup um, after many years and having sort of a mental breakdown to the point that she decided to seek out a therapist for herself. So the story is this really interesting perspective. You're, you're watching this therapist um, on, a, on her own therapy journey. And you're also following some of her patients as they go through their therapy journey. So the stories are kind of woven together. I'd say there's probably three or four of her um, patients. And she was very careful to, um, you know, keep everything confidential in terms of identity and details of everything. But you, you're sort of seeing the perspective of a therapist as well as a patient because she is both at the same time. And um, it's, it's really interesting to watch the progress that people are making in therapy. It's over about a year, I think. And you can kind of see um, the change in people and what the changes they go through over that year. And I would say that a lot of the things they learn can be applied, you know, to any of our lives, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I really recommend this one. It does, you know, it's funny. It does have some sad parts, but um, if you're at all interested in, you know, talk therapy and, and how that can really change a person, I think it's, I think it's really worth checking out. That one sounds awesome. So I actually really enjoy memoirs. So do and I. And <laughs> the fact that it's coming from a therapist and her perspective of needing therapy herself, I feel like that's such an important 
topic because yeah. you know here's a professional saying like yes I need help too mm -hmm. and the viewpoint that you must get from her from seeing both sides right from you know being a professional and a patient sounds like that would be a really great thing to listen to and I think that we sometimes we forget that you know therapists doctors all of those people you know they're they're still people and so it's right it's something that you forget and it and it just brings that home to sort of see like, yeah, they, they go through the same struggles. So it's interesting. Yeah. That sounds like one that I would want to listen to. So I'll yeah. actually add that to my list. <laughs> yeah. Now, so. would you like to um, talk a little bit about um, your experience with Libby and audiobooks? Yeah, absolutely. So the Four County Library System has an app that's available for free and it's called Libby. Um, I downloaded it on my phone for the first time this year, and I had never really tried audiobooks before, but I actually found that I really enjoy it. So it's nice having it on your phone because I listen to it in the car on my way to work, um, or I'll even put it on my windowsill while I'm washing dishes. It's just something, you know, a little bit nice, different than the radio. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of different books that I have listened to on Libby. And the first one is called The Happiness Project. It's by Gretchen Rubin. It's a fairly short audiobook. It's about 10 hours. Um, and in it, she goes on like this year long journey of trying to increase her own happiness in her life. And each month she picks something different to focus on, which is pretty cool. And then um, she continues to build those things. So like um, in January, I think she focuses on decluttering. And then in February, I believe it was like her marriage. So like, but in February she focuses on both of those things. So it's cumulative as the year goes and it's, really interesting to listen to her perspective on some different things and what worked for her and what didn't work. Um, some other topics that she di um, dives into are parenting, um, spirituality, and um, family. So it's really cool. I enjoyed it as a different perspective because there's such, I feel like we tend to focus a lot more on the negative and she was forcing herself to focus on the positive aspects of her life. And I think just doing that made a big difference for her. Um, the other thing that she discovered that was important to her was novelty and challenge, which I think is true for anyone. We all need to feel like we're growing in some way in order to feel like our lives have meaning, I guess. So I thought that was pretty cool. That sounds great. And I think, um... I think any of those books that are, I don't know, maybe self-help, those are so popular. And I love the idea of it being focused on happiness because isn't that what everybody wants, right? Yeah. <laughs> everybody <laughs> wants that. Everybody wants to work on that. And I love the idea of, of making it, breaking it down into parts and making mm -hmm. it um, something different to focus on rather than it being so overwhelming. And right. the cumulative idea is interesting. I'll have to check that one out. She actually like has these things that she creates each month to track her progress so that she has like a visual thing to say, yes, I followed this today. Like I met my goal, which was, I thought was kind of cool. Cause that's like a way of keeping herself accountable. So that was interesting. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a great idea. And I think people could definitely take those ideas and, and use them in their own lives, which I, I love that. Yeah, that's pretty, that was really cool. <laughs> um, so the next one I'm going to talk about, I haven't finished it yet. I actually just started it the other day. It's called City of Girls, and it's written by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, it's the story of this young girl named Vivian. I think it's back in the 40s. But she's, well, actually the story occurs in 2010, but she's reminiscing about like the 1940s when she was a young girl. 
and she moves to New York City. She, she flunked out of college and her parents pretty much ship her off to her aunt who owns this um, kind of low end theater company. They don't do any like big productions. It's more for the working class, but she goes from such one extreme to an, another. So her life back at home was very rigid and structured and there was always someone watching out for her. And then suddenly she, when she goes to the city, her aunt is very progressive and free thinking and she's in this whole new place. And it's, you know, it's really exciting for her. But um, as she's telling this story, she's actually telling it to this girl named Angela. And Angela is, a young girl who is asking what Vivian's relationship was with her father and what she, what she was to her father, basically. And um, Vivian says, well, I can't answer that question, but I can tell you what he was to me. So I think later on in the book, it's supposed to change perspectives and go back and forth between Vivian and Angela. I haven't gotten to the part yet with Angela, but I can't wait to see what her perspective is and how that changes the story. This one has been, I, I keep hearing about this book. I, I think it's been um, on a lot of bestseller lists and I think it's also been used in a lot of book clubs lately because we've been getting, we've gotten several calls about it. So I think it's it's been really popular and um, it sounds really interesting, especially that it spans several decades, it sounds like. Yeah. And I know historical fiction is often really popular. So that sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm interested to see how things play out and Vivian and Angela's lives interconnect. Um, I know Vivian is really loves sewing. And at one point they mentioned that she sewed Angela's wedding dress. So I think that's going to come into play later, but I'm not really sure how yet. <laughs> hmm, that sounds interesting. Well, now I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to check that one out. And you, you mentioned that you, I know a lot of people like to listen to audiobooks in the car um, when they're driving. And I think, I think that Libby is great for that. We still get a lot of people that come in and do check out um, the actual CD audiobooks, but more and more people I think are moving to use the Libby app. And um, for those that aren't aware, uh, Libby is the app version of Overdrive. So if you've used Overdrive um, for eBooks and things like that, Libby is a way that you can actually have that on your phone or your device and just makes it a, a little easier please do check out our audiobooks. Like I said, we have a wide variety and um, you can check them out in the library or on Libby and we'd be happy to help you with either of those. So thanks so much for joining me today, Miranda, and have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.